So the Blackmagic eGPU comes equipped with two Thunderbolt 3 ports, four USB 3.1 ports, an HDMI port. Inside there's an AMD RX 580 GPU and that has 8 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and you know what, there's been a lot of talk and excitement since the announcement last week of this. The Blackmagic eGPU. What is an eGPU? It stands for External Graphics Processing Unit, which is basically an external video card, but a GPU is a little bit different because it does acceleration as well as just graphics applications. So anyway, here it is. So right now we're going to do a full review on this piece of hardware. So the big question everybody's asking is, is this the computer of the future where we're just going to use our laptop and attach to this eGPU to give us graphics performance and then we can get rid of the desktop, use the laptop, come in and this is our new computer. Well, I'm going to answer that right now in this review. Okay, of course there are other eGPUs available um, at lesser price, but the beauty of this is it's an all-in-one enclosure. It's beautiful, it sits on the desk, it looks gorgeous. Uh, you don't have to do a lot of configuration, you just plug it in and use it. This is designed not so much for gamers, but this is designed more for graphics and video professionals who are working on a laptop and then they want the better performance of the better video card. Say for example, the new MacBook Pro, we've got you know four gigabytes of video memory, plug into this and now we've got an eight gigabyte video card. And that's supposed to speed up a lot of different process. And the question is, does it? Well, I'm going to answer that in a little bit as well. So aesthetically speaking, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's a work of art. So this beautiful metal enclosure here imprisons an AMD RX 580 GPU with 8 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. Now, I say imprisons because this is not upgradable. In fact, they tell you not even to open the case. So you can't switch this out and then change the card like you can in some others. Now the reason people would go for this is number one, it has compatibility with the MacBook Pro. In order to use this, you need to be on High Sierra at least 10.14.3 where they added the eGPU support recently. And you'll see the little icon when you connect it there in the toolbar and you can also use that to eject the eGPU. Earlier versions of the software will not work, so make sure you update before you try to run this. Now on the good side of this, um, part of the reason why people are willing to drop the Sirius Benjamins on it, because it's around $699, is because it is silent. And I'll agree. When you run this thing, it looks beautiful and it creates almost no noise. You can't really hear it, which is great for professionals, particularly if you're doing recording and things like that and you don't want a lot of sound or you just don't want to be annoyed while you're editing your photos, your videos, etc. I'm going to be approaching this particular review from a graphics professional uh, viewpoint. So this is going to be for people who are doing photography, who are doing design and who are doing videography and video editing. This is who I'm going to be looking at. So we're not even going to look at so much the benchmarks because unless you want to run a benchmark program faster than somebody else, it doesn't really matter. What we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be looking at tasks that we can perform with this. Okay, before we jump into those results, though, is another thing worth mentioning is the ports on the back. So when you attach your MacBook Pro to this device, uh, this is 85 watts, which means it's actually going to charge your computer. So you don't need to have a bunch of cables coming out of your MacBook Pro. You can just take the one USB-C cable into here and that will provide power and everything else. And because of the USB ports and everything like that, we can use this as a hub. And in fact, I tested it. I connected a 4K Samsung 27 inch monitor into the HDMI port. I attached a keyboard and a mouse into the USB port. And I even attached a Thunder Bay um, USB 3 uh, RAID system. So I was able to connect that and all of it, just one cable from my MacBook Pro into here. And so I have a desktop class docking station with all the modern peripherals and I was able to run a MacBook Pro with the lid closed and just use everything else. So the other thing I was very curious about is the dual screen 
support. So when I connect to this and I've got my MacBook Pro open up, I'm able to extend my desktop onto the 27 inch and use both of those desktops. And of course you can always mirror them. So as far as that as a docking station goes, it's fantastic. The sound is quiet, it looks good, it's easy to connect everything, and I can come with my MacBook Pro, one plug, and I'm good to go, don't have to fiddle around with power and etc, etc. So that's the good news. So for this test, I'm using a 2017 MacBook Pro, and I'm going to put the specs right there on the screen, fully loaded with just the one terabyte SSD. Now, I've ordered the 2018 MacBook Pro with the 32 gigs of RAM, the 6 core, that hasn't arrived yet. I'm going to do a review on that next week, and I'll add any updated specs on the end of that. So, really, using the slower MacBook Pro with the older GPU, I should see a bigger increase, really, than I would over the new one. But, once again, we'll see when I do that review next week. So, right now, using the 2017 MacBook Pro by itself, and then connecting it to the eGPU on a 27-inch Samsung 4K monitor. We're going to be comparing that. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is a test for photography. So we're using Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. I've got 49 images, and I'm just going to do some basic tasks to these. The very first task is I created a complex preset. You're using a lot of things like clarity, uh, shadow highlight, different things like that, and even applied some curves in there just to kind of beef it up a little bit so it would have a little bit of processing to do. And then I synced that to the 49 images. So the result of that with the eGPU took 14.73 seconds. Not bad, right? Well, the MacBook Pro on its own without the GPU took 9.78 seconds. It was actually faster without using that. Okay, let's move to the next task. Exporting as a JPEG. I exported all the images as a JPEG with a watermark on there, and I saw almost no difference. In fact, the eGPU was slower than the MacBook Pro on its own. So I didn't really do a lot more than that, really, in Lightroom. I decided, hey, you know, let's jump into Photoshop um, because I know there's more GPU accelerated features in Photoshop and let's have a look and see what we found in there. So the first thing we did is I opened up a panorama, nice big pano. So it took about three seconds to open it on both, which wouldn't really matter because most of that SSD doesn't have much to do with GPU. But then we jumped in there and one of the filters I love to apply because it really stresses a machine is to do the radial blur, turn it up to zoom, turn it to the best quality and all the way up to 100. And the MacBook Pro by itself came in at 28.34 seconds. And the eGPU came in slightly faster at 27.4. Five, two. So I decided I wanted to beef up this file. I know we've got a file that's large in dimensions, but I also wanted to give it a little bit more depth than just a flat file. So I duplicated the layer nine times, so now it's ten layers at those same dimensions. So I decided to save it out on the MacBook Pro. It took one minute and 24 seconds. The eGPU came in slightly faster at 1 minute and 21 seconds. Okay, at this point, I was starting to wonder, okay, is this GPU actually working or, or is it not? So what I did is I went into Photoshop and under the preferences there, you can go under performance, a graphics performance, and it will show you the card, the video card that's being used. And sure enough, it was using the 580. I could see it was using the eGPU in the settings there because I was starting to wonder hey is this thing actually even activated so now I wanted to test doubling the size of this uh, doing the image resize so we went under the image resize I doubled the size of it and that's with the 10 layers and also with the large file size and I also used preserve details 2.0 which is using AI um, to re interpolate that and I know that that interpolation is using a lot of GPU so here's the result with the MacBook Pro on its own, it took 1 minute and 33 seconds. With the eGPU, it took 1 minute and 29 seconds. So it's about a 4 second difference. Certainly not these double and triple speeds that we've been hearing about. Very, very minuscule. But let's continue. Okay, so at this point, our file we're working on is... 8 gigabyte scratch and it's actually 4.7 gigabyte file size so I decided to save it I know saving can be really taxing so let's check that out 
So saving it on the MacBook Pro took 5 minutes and 37 seconds. And with the eGPU, it took a blistering 5 minutes and 35 seconds. This was an incredible 2 seconds faster. Okay, just for fun, I exported a JPEG. It took two seconds on both. All right, so at this point here, I'm thinking, okay, I need to do something that I know is very GPU intensive. All right, so I know that the uh, radial blur filter is an older filter and it was put into Photoshop before Adobe started widely adopting GPU. Right now, you know, just so much in Photoshop now is taking advantage of the DP GPU and it has been for quite a while now. So I was thinking, okay, what's a newer filter that was put in that is really mostly taking advantage of the GPU and that would be the blur gallery. And out of the blur gallery, gallery, probably the most difficult one to do is the tilt shift blur. So I decided to take this whole big, huge, massive file and apply a tilt shift blur using the blur gallery. So I did that and here's the result. Using the MacBook Pro on its own took 59.48 seconds. Using the eGPU, I was definitely right. The GPU did make a difference, 51.78 seconds. So it was a little bit of a difference there between maybe the radial blur filter. But still, you know, is that enough of a difference to be looking at this $699 upgrade? Well, I figured, okay, one last thing. Let's jump into Premiere Pro and see what it can do in video. So the first thing that happened is Premiere crashed a couple of times and I wasn't able to run it with the GPU and I thought, well, maybe Premiere Pro is not working right. So I rebooted my MacBook Pro without the eGPU and Premiere Pro ran fine. So what I did this time is I put the eGPU on and then I rebooted it with the lid closed to make sure that the MacBook Pro's video card wasn't mixing with the eGPU or influencing it in any way, um, which is actually how I ran these tests. And when I did that, Premiere Pro works perfectly. So I decided to do an encoding test. And so I took my last YouTube video, which is one I did, it's actually a little bit of a longer video, it's about a 20 minute video that I did on creating vintage photo effects in Photoshop. So I decided to encode this again. It took 18 minutes and 31 seconds to encode it on a normal machine. So then I rebooted everything else into the eGPU and re-encoded that same video and it took 18 minutes and 8 seconds. Okay, so obviously these are not the results I was hoping for or expecting. I was expecting a 20 to 30 percent jump if not more and I didn't get that. Um, so what went wrong? Well, what do I think went wrong? Well, there's a couple of things. Number one, Apple did this collaboration with Blackmagic and created this device. Now, when they did this, one of the things you might notice is DaVinci Resolve is used as the benchmark and it has really great results. And the reason for that is because Blackmagic makes DaVinci <laughs> as well as this piece of hardware. So obviously they were able to pair the hardware with their software, test it thoroughly and make sure it worked. Now, having said that, you know, there's some shortcomings in other software. For example, even Final Cut Pro can use this but when it encodes it doesn't use it so you're not going to see a big difference in encoding using this and then when we talk to other companies you know such as adobe and you know and other companies that create uh creative software i have some friends that are pretty high up in some software companies and i talk with them and they had no knowledge that apple was going to release this um, they were never contacted to test their software or even have the opportunity to make sure it's compatible or build in any kind of support. Um, the other software companies literally found out the same time we did when Apple made the announcement. So I think in the future, going down the road, we could see better support for this built into some of the software, but literally a lot of the software manufacturers haven't even had a chance to look at this, use it, or support it. So it's a typical kind of Apple thing, um, you know, let's put something out there and let everybody else catch up. Maybe that's what it is. But the problem is, I don't want to catch up um, because the software that I want to use right now is not optimized to work on this box. So I could wait to see if the software is going to be optimized to work better. But because this is not upgradable, by then, I'm sure another model is going to come out with a better GPU or a newer one. So it, it's kind of like right now, this is not super useful to me. Down the road, maybe it is. But let's talk about it 
right now this is a very beautiful device and it's whisper quiet so it's my pet rock and it didn't cost six hundred and ninety nine dollars so anyway guys what do you think about this is this something that you would buy is this something you were hoping it would be better um, is this something that maybe you are using it and you're getting better results than what I am? I'd love to hear about that. Drop a comment underneath. Um, until then, uh, if you like this video, smash that like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.